So it has been 14 days since my last video in this series and a lot has happened and I'm so excited to share everything with you. So welcome to episode 8 on my small channel's journey to monetization. In this series I talk about my YouTube's journey while balancing parenthood and a full-time job. So if you're new here, welcome. I'm completely transparent about everything I'm doing on this channel. So I'll cover what I have done since the last episode, the results I have seen, and my plans for the future. So since my last episode I have been busy. I made 6 long form videos and 30 shorts. I know that might seem like a lot, but it was spread out over 48 days. So to keep it short, I made one video where I talked about why bad videos will explode your small YouTube channel. After that, I've made three CapCut videos. One is how to get CapCut Pro for free. The second is how you can blur the background of your videos using CapCut. And another one where I show you five different ways you can use the blur effect in your videos by using the CapCut app. And finally, the last video I did is related to the trend that is going on on YouTube right now regarding the fastest way to grow on YouTube by making simple videos. And I'm not going to go into details about these videos, but I will link them in the description, so if you're curious about them, you can check them out later. Now, as for the 30 short form videos, I conducted an experiment on my channel because I clicked segments of my long form videos and repurposed them into one short per day for 30 days. And I will also share the result of this 30 day test in a separate video, so if you are interested about them, be sure to be subscribed and get notified when it comes out. Now for the next period, I am going to continue to make videos more related to CapCut app and also videos that are trending in my niche. And I will be using my point of view and my perspective on those subjects so if you are curious about them, make sure that you follow along. Now before I go to my computer and see what the analytics were, let me share with you and if you are following my channel, you have probably noticed that I have changed my recording device from my iPhone 14 Pro Max to the first generation of the ZV-E10 Sony camera. And all I can say for now is switching cameras takes a little bit of a learning curve and I'm going to probably make a video about it because I had to search a lot on the internet and also on YouTube to find the information I needed to set it up and make it work for my situation. And I'm still learning some of these features, but I've managed to connect it to OBS Studio. Now the next step is to connect it to the Elgato Wave microphone so I can have everything in one place. However, my MacBook Air sports are currently occupied so I'm using a different computer to record my voice with the microphone. Now the issue with my current setup is that I can't adjust any settings or install the Wavelink software to fine tune my voice as this is a company computer with restrictions on software installation. And to resolve this, I'm considering investing in an external dock because this will allow me to connect everything, the camera, the microphone, and possibly a teleprompter in the future to my Mac with a single cable. However, for now I use my budget on the ZV in 10 camera, so we'll see. Oh, and regarding the camera, I want to mention that because this is the first generation model, I couldn't connect it directly to my computer. So I had to buy another gadget called the capture card from Elgato. Because this camera only supports 720p resolution when connected to the computer. So if you want 4K footage directly on your computer, keep in mind that you need to buy a capture card. But this isn't necessary if you don't need it. But to record 4K video at the highest quality of the camera offers, I would have had to buy a faster memory card costing about $70. And that's fine, but it wouldn't really improve my workflow, as I'd still have to remove the card after each recording and manually copy the files to my computer. So because I bought this camera solely for recording YouTube videos, I went a different route and purchased the Elgato Camling 4K for about $100. Now, after finishing any recording, I can leave the camera on the tripod without moving it and the footage is already on my computer. And then all I have to do is simply drag the file into CapCut or Final Cut Pro to start editing. Alright, enough chit chat. Let's dive into the analytics since our last episode. First, let's examine the YouTube analytics to see the real-time data. 
the period we're looking at is from September the 1st to October the 18th. And even though today is Sunday, October the 20th, YouTube doesn't display data for the last two days. So during this period, the channel got over 12 thousand views and you can see the videos here but due to the high number of uploads i can't show you each individual video however you can see the total numbers right here now for the cumulated watch time I had almost 142 hours and these aren't actually the watch time hours eligible for monetization if you go the long form route and later in the video I'll show you how much of this watch time came from shorts and how much from long form videos. So moving on, the channel gained over 61 new subscribers and I welcome each and every one of you who decided to join and to stay. However, I'll show you shortly, some subscribers also decided to leave. Now let's look at my spreadsheet to see exactly what happened and compare it with my previous period. So this is my sheet where I track my YouTube journey. And we are now on episode 8, covering the period from September the 1st to October the 18th. So total of 48 days since the last episode. During this time, I've uploaded 6 long form videos and 30 shorts. And from that, the channel received just over 90,000 impressions. The average view duration seems to have decreased significantly, so I delve into the YouTube Studio Analytics to check exactly what happened. There is this area we can check your metrics divided by content type and you can also track it by going into the analytics and clicking on content types on the top. So as you can see, the watch time for shorts was much lower, which is significantly affecting the overall average view duration on my channel. However, I am thrilled to see that my long form videos average view duration has increased substantially. And this is great for two reasons. The first one is that I'll be able to gain the required amount of watch time needed for the channel's monetization. And as you probably know, this is the most challenging part of getting your YouTube channel monetized because you need 4,000 watch hours. Even more importantly, if you're planning to generate income from your channel, a higher average view duration on your videos means that you will make more money. This is because YouTube will show more ads to your viewers, allowing YouTube to share that revenue with you as a creator. So before we return to my spreadsheet, I like to highlight that the impressions click through rate has also increased. And as you can see, the average is 3.9%, but it is actually higher for long form videos as shown here. Now returning to my spreadsheet, the CTR is 3.9% as you saw in YouTube studio. And I actually gained 84 subscribers, but lost 23. So my channel sits at 265 subscribers at the time of recording this video. And to track the evolution of my channel using the subscribers per day metric, we can see that it is slightly decreased to 1.27. So during this period, I received a little over 12,000 views with 141 watch time hours. And the average watch time per day is just under 3 hours. Now I've created another sheet within this tracking file to provide a higher level view on my channel's evolution because I believe this will help you understand or compare it with your own channel's growth. However, don't take my results as a benchmark, because despite my effort towards consistency in uploads and content, there are many variables at play. So please take this information with a grain of salt. And let me break it down for you in a way that is easy to understand. Because I've been tracking my channel's growth in chunks of 50 subscribers from 0 all the way up to 250. And for each of these milestones, I've been keeping tabs on some key details. Things like how long it took to reach each milestone, how many videos I pumped out during that time, and how often my videos were popping up in people's feeds. That's what we call impressions. I've also been keeping an eye on how often people actually click on my videos when they saw the thumbnail, and that's called the click-through rate. And of course, I've been tracking how long people stuck around to watch my content and how many views I racked up. Now why am I doing all this? It is simple really. This breakdown gives me and you a crystal clear picture 
on how my channel has been growing. It is like a roadmap of my journey to my first 250 subscribers. So that wraps it up for this episode. I hope you found value in this information. And if you'd like to connect or share the experiences for the last month or two, feel free to do so in the comments. And if you'd like to see my complete journey up to this point, check out this playlist with all my previous episodes. Alternatively, you can click on the video YouTube recommends next. So thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Ciao!